Well, a very uh, good evening. Welcome along to Oslo. Delighted to have you with us here, as you can see, for what is a uh, world-class list of horses and riders tonight in the uh, Telenor Arena. Could not be uh, happier to uh, be alongside you. Of course, Oslo on Sunday will form the opening leg of the Longine FEI Jumping World Cup Series, the uh, 40th season of the uh, Show Jumping World Cup. 14 legs on the way to Riyadh on the Western European League. The uh, Norwegian start is always the first of the 11 different nations that we will visit. And uh, tonight gives us a fabulous precursor to that World Cup round on Sunday. And as you can see, the stars are certainly in town. When you look at the lineup, it is uh, world class, full of quality, some uh, brilliant riders, brilliant horses. And this uh, arena always with a uh, quite sensational atmosphere. The hospitality over there absolutely packed already tonight. And this is the second of the uh, jumping classes, the first world ranking class. And uh, an absolute delight to be alongside you all here on FEI TV. There's plenty of home talent alongside plenty of big names from around the world. That includes the likes of uh, world champion and world number one, uh, Henrik von Eckermann. Includes the likes of the new European champion, in the form of uh, Steve Gadat from uh, Switzerland. And then uh, add into the mix an Olympic champion from uh, Tokyo in the form of uh, Great Britain's Ben Mayer. That's just three names to pick out of what is a uh, quite brilliant start list. There's lots of uh, informed horses and riders. Some interesting new combinations and riders stepping up. There's some young talent as well from the home nation from Norway that will be uh, getting its chance to uh, really compete here on home soil. We are uh, about 10 minutes from the capital. We're deep in the urban area of uh, Fonebu here in Oslo. 27th edition this year of the Oslo Horse Show, the Agria Oslo Horse Show. And uh, looking forward to seeing how this one unfolds this evening. It is a one round faults and time competition, launching ranking points, and uh, this course set by our uh, course designer from Italy. It's uh, Elio Travagaletti who uh, alongside his team has uh, given us a really fascinating course, 12 different obstacles, 15 jumping efforts, a time allowed set at 78 seconds. I'm not sure that that should be overly bothered by those that are uh, pushing on and going for it here. So uh, 78 seconds of time allowed, but the uh, combination, you can sort of see it there, coming across the middle, you've got that parallel going in, two strides, upright, upright, single stride coming out. That comes quite early in the course, 5A, 5B, 5C. And if you look over by the hospitality on the angle we've got, you'll see the double there as well. That comes in the uh, last line, the upright to parallel coming off that corner from the in-gate. Talking of in-gates, I think the first is ready to get underway. Enjoy what is a uh, brilliant night of sport coming our way and uh, excited to see this one unfold as we uh, start with a partnership from uh, Denmark in the form of Lars Back Anderson riding uh, Athene, the 11-year-old mare by San Pacriano Corrado. Lars, who has uh, competed at uh, the World Championships in uh, Herning, Back in uh, 2022, he uh, also rode at the 2007 European Championships. This is a horse that he's in fact produced up through the levels. Recently, they were second in the uh, Big Grand Prix in Warsaw. He's had some Nations Cup outings this year as well. And it'll be a good, strong starting combination, you would hope. This uh, Holstein mare to uh, give us a little bit of a clue as to how this course is going to ride. One of those nights you just get the feeling it will get quicker and quicker the deeper we get into this class this beautiful cauldron that uh, sees the grandstands going right the way up on that side of the arena creates such a uh, fabulous atmosphere 
All right, here we go. Lars back Anderson for Denmark and the Bean. It's no big fence. So you just come on the angle off this corner. And it's nice and deep round to the opening. A little bit of hopping and skipping there on the eight he took from one to two. Back round is certainly an important turn. Six strides. Now into this combination. First part down, two strides, one stride out over the second part, four faults. Again, giving them plenty of room, combination all on its own in the center there. Eight into the next two lines here. Five strides down to ten. Now into the final line. First part of the double, just like the first part of the combination. And the last goes down to uh, bring them home on a final total of 12, 73, 70 on the clock. Oh. Uh, comfortable on time. Lance back Anderson there, and at Dean. Continuing to step up through the gears. Now taking on these five star shows through the course of this winter. So early stages for a lot of these horses as well. Jumping indoors, certainly jumping at this level indoors. First of the big indoor five star shows of the season. Not quite sure it'll be too daunting for this man. Of course, he starts now what is the road to another final where he'll look next year in Riyadh to try and defend the uh, Longin FEI Jumping World Cup title that he won in Omaha this year. It's the turn of Henry von Eckman, the world number one, the world champion. Tonight riding Kalitsi, the 10-year-old uh, mare by Celestial. This is World Cup winning ride, King Edward's had some big Grand Prix wins this year. This particular ride perhaps hasn't featured quite as strongly in his top tier, but had a good win in Ascona. Started the year off well in Basel with a win. Thinking back to Basel, of course, that was where Henrik won that round of the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup on King Edward. Certainly want to start strong. He had that big win on King Edward in Rome and just naturally so quick. Comes inside as well here, immediately finding the option between seven and eight. Got it on the five strides, landed out of there in 50 seconds. Always oh, at the first part of the double down. Certainly looks good in terms of the time. I think that time of 62.78 will give us a good read as to what we need to expect out of this course. Henrik not leaving much on the table in terms of options. He took them all. All right, going into the double, catching both of the first two, just comes quite quickly off that turn. John Fence 10, it sent you quite deep. Meanwhile, the replay there back at fence number eight, but this was the in part just caught it behind well from one Swedish superstar to another and of course alongside Henrik has been part of those medal winning performances in uh, Tokyo and at the world championships the team golds Henrik of course was on the European team gold just recently although Peda is back from injury in recent months not part of the European team European champion back in 2017 this ride is the wonderful Hansen WL the now 15 year old gelding by hip hop recently jumping very well in Rome and in London it's a former Grand Prix winner of the likes of Le Bull can Riyadh
takes that slightly wider line. Now we know there is an inside turn there. You asking a lot of the horse to sort of twist in the air, as we saw with Henrik and Kalitsi. Now, still clear as he comes round to this final line, looking for the opening clear of the night. Gets in and out of the double. And just holds the horse, Hansen jumps it well. 71-71. Oh. It's a steady round of jumping from Peter Fredrickson, but all importantly, it is a clear round of jumping to set the standard here tonight on the uh, Friday night in Oslo. The opening leg of the uh, Longin FEI Jumping World Cup, that round taking place here on Sunday. We'll have that for you live on FEI TV. Well, Ireland's Shane Breen. Last week, jumping in Birmingham. The horse of the year show of the three star, getting the horses indoors. This particular one, Scartine. Ten year old gelding by Cardento. Proved to be quick. Shane oh, just getting a little bit unbalanced through the combinations. Gutting just jumping around a little bit with him in places. This horse in the Speed Horse of the Year last week and put in a quite brilliant performance to come out on top of that one. So he certainly got the pace, but at the moment just see almost having to hold the horse back really try to find the stride then let it go on the fall 69.82 Petter still leads that goes third Shane Breen Scartine sadly one part of the combination going down feeling that's a horse there that'll feature plenty over the next six months on the Rodgen FEI Jumping World Cup season well, to another rider that went very well last week in Birmingham at the three star of the horse of the year show on his home patch Jack Whitaker, Great Britain rides here with uh, the nine year old Oscar Candres week winning one of the ranking classes he's been having a really good run of form over the last couple of months jumping well down in Saint-Tropez there's an exciting new member of the stable without any problems now back we come Seven strides from this fence does he come inside no goes round it's only Henrik that's come inside but Henrik's time so much faster than everyone else but a fence down leaves Zep Pedder who is what some nine seconds slower in front from these opening few but still only one clear round Gentle rub on the back rail is enough to see it fall. So that is one down, that is four, 68 41. Slots into third behind the, the two Swedish riders, Jack Whitaker there for Great Britain. On oh, Oscar can dress the nine year old gilding. Barely touched that back rail coming out. Have another look here. Slightest rubber, perhaps in fact on the slow mo, you think he hit it a little bit harder. Well, moving on, it's the turn of Austria's number one, Max Kuhner. Most recently part of that bronze medal winning team at the European Championships. Such a brilliant rider in championship conditions. He's 
featured so highly individually on occasions as well. Been to four World Cup finals. First result was in uh, Leipzig and uh, Gothenburg on both occasions. He finished in ninth back in 2022 and 2019. This horse, EIC, coolly jumped the queue, the 10 year old gelding by Pacino. Seen much of this since uh, Volkenswart in July. Did win the Grand Prix in Basel back yeah. at the start of the year. to shorten up a little bit going down there on the five he got such a forward jump over fence nine he's just keeping that balance as best he can he's going to be slower than Pedder's time if he does jump this clear though he'll go up into second place and that he has 74 37 there's going to be a slight contradiction in approach some horses and riders will uh, obviously be all keen to jump the clear but some are more likely so let the handbrake off like we saw with Henrik more than others. It just depends which way they're focusing their horses over the course of tomorrow and through until Sunday. In some cases they'll be looking towards next week perhaps in Helsinki, but Max will be really pleased with the way that uh, Cooley Jump the Q has come back. Someone that'll be very pleased currently is the new European champion. Swiss rider Steve Gadat won that in Milan back at the start of September. The 2012 individual gold medalist from those uh, London Olympics as well. His second individual gold at championship level, a multiple team gold medalist and a man that has lifted the World Cup final title on three separate occasions. This is the horse. Alba Friends Maddox, the 12 year old gelding by Cuiba, that he rode to team gold at the Europeans in Risenbeck in 2021. He went for a really tight turn and he asked a huge amount of Maddox there, but sadly just not quite able to reach out over the back rail. riders and horses on their hooves and their toes this evening because there's a lot to think about delicate precision riding needed to get the clears and that is eight for Steve Cadet the European champion with Alba Frins Maddox of course he won the European title on Dynamics de Belhem he's got another brilliant lineup in his team at home at the moment Still, Peter Fredrickson leads the way. 71-71, that leading time. Hand up just to ask the countdown to be held for a moment or two for the uh, first of the Italian riders that are with us. Good group of Italian riders here as well. This is going to be uh, Eugenio Grimaldi, or riding Ibiza. Sort of lighter year internationally with this horse. Top 10 in the Grand Prix in Italy in uh, Nami in the two star back in June. Did jump in the five star in uh, Piazza di Siena. It's a 10 year old gelding by Durango VDL. Very tight back into this combination. Asked a lot. Of course, gave him a lot as well. When he came inside to the combination, he comes round here back to the 
World Cup FEI fence at number eight. That's the five comfortably. Now comes around to this double. Great close up if you sat at the tables there, but it's the front part or the front rail that comes down in the double and the last goes as well. So Sadly for them, it's a total of eight faults, 70.99 on the clock for the uh, first of the Italian riders here this evening. And still, we're sat with just two clear rounds, one for Sweden, one for Austria. More for Italy a little bit later on. He's really going to shake that leaderboard up. It would have been Henrik had he jumped the clear, because 62-78. <laughs> you know, I wonder if anyone will actually go quicker than that throughout the rest of the class. We will see. Another rider that knows how to win the Longine FEI Jumping World Cup title. He did so in Lyon in 2014 on Cornet de Moor. It is uh, Daniel Deusser for Germany. He's aiming to head to Riyadh in his eighth final when he starts that campaign here on Sunday. Tonight he's riding Dingo Eshtihedemel, the stallion, by uh, number one de Iso. This is a five star Grand Prix winner as one. Well. Likes of the Grand Prix in Cannes and in Volkensvard was second, in fact, would have been last year in the World Cup round in Madrid, where we'll be heading at the end of December. Oh, end of November, getting ahead of myself, the end of December, we'll be going to Mechlin. Daniel's keeping up the pace here, he's decided to let Bingo run a little bit. He has decided to take the wider line. Do keep up a nice rhythm and it keeps a really nice smooth turn all the way back round here to this five strided line. Seventy one seventy one leads at the moment and it will still two fences going down that double really making them think the black and white colors at the end catching out Daniel Deusser as well, so he finishes on the 8th, 65.98, relatively in terms of time, would have still been, what, seconds away from what Henrik did, but it was still a really great effort from Daniel Deusser there, but it's all riders with fences down, there are only two clear rounds, Peter Fredrickson and Max Kuhner in clear rounds come first, times come second, looking to see which of those riders can really open the can up and start to uh, put the pressure on those to follow. Another for the Swiss now, Alan Yufer. Riding Dante M.M. 12 year old gelding by Diorado. This just recently in Barcelona in the Nations Cup final for the Swiss. He was on the Nations Cup team in Rome. He had a top four back on the Longine FEI World Cup circuit in Amsterdam the end of January this year. This horse that does go well indoors. Nice turn back into the combination. say he's still clear because he's coming around to this final line and he again looks quicker and he's still clear and he's still quicker than Peter Fredrickson and he's going to be quicker all the way to the finish 66-0 through mean leader it goes uh, to the top Alan Dufer for the Swiss Dante MM putting in a really nice round here on this Friday night in Oslo so 66-03 uh, it's just taken, what, five seconds? Five plus seconds off the time from Peter Fredrickson. Despite that we know you can perhaps eke out a quicker time, he's maybe drawn a nice balance there with the clear and, of course, putting in a really strong round of time as well. Norway, who've got a real nice lineup of uh, talent here on display on their home show, first of which is uh, Benekit. Sedersgaard Ederson riding this nine year old stallion by Quickstar called at Quick Nick. Road on middle winning 
youth teams coming through the ranks. This horse here 12 months ago in Oslo finished twice in the top 10. And recently jumped in Lear. It would have been last, well, last week they were in Centaur, so it had just been a couple of weeks before that. Joy's going well in front of the home crowd. around here guarantees you at the moment a top four twice last year here in Oslo in the top ten jumps the clear in the crowd absolutely love it as uh, better keep there goes uh, clear second place faster than Petter 71.5 just a couple of tenths up on the uh, Swedish rider still Ellen Ufer well clear in front but that's a really nice round for the home fans to enjoy and a uh, quick nick there so just a nine-year-old so Looking very nice. On we go to the, the combination riding for Monaco. Inigo Lopez de la Osa Franco. A rather long journey now, sadly, after having had the first fence down. He rode at the Young Rider Europeans in Gulliminore back in the summertime. In fact, has been a regular at those youth championships. He jumped here with this horse, Jade, the 10 year old by Cardento jumped here and in fact in Helsinki last year. This is a former ride actually of Sergio Veras Moya but today having real difficulties getting just a little bit of knock to the confidence and just sort of then bringing further problems as they go along. It's a horse that's very capable. These two went to uh, Riyadh at the back end of last year and jumped really well at some of the big four and five star shows got several top ten finishers he's going to retire yeah, just wants to leave things on a confident note a confident note didn't want the horse's last Thoughts will have uh, been knocking the fence down, so in fact, just lets the horse settle right down, calms everything down, has a little pop over a fence, says, so Right, there we go, it's all good, we can come back tomorrow. Dutch rider goes next, Kevin Yockums, Lacosta. He's just back from Spruce Meadows, says Kevin. Of this horse, he himself has got a great track record in these big classes. Kevin, in fact, only took this ride on, would have been what about 12 months ago. It was a former five star ride of Ishmael Garcia Roque, who had ridden it in the likes of the Nations Cup final back in 2021. They started off well this year, these two had a very good Grand Prix win on the Sunshine Tour back in February selected as part of the Dutch team on the Nations Cup in Brussels really waiting to see who can try and chase down and then you put who leads at the moment the Swiss rider out in front four clear rounds it's Switzerland Norway Sweden currently plenty of scope plenty of ability huge jump there very comfortable on that tight turn back to the combination and all the power to get out of the other end now he's only the second rider to come inside here it's a slightly different style of going but it's certainly covering the ground nicely as well and he's cut a good few seconds off his time with that inside turn but it's irrelevant now 
water tray was a fence we hadn't seen fall. That's a fence we've seen fall before. Not to be tonight. 12 it is. 65 uh, 78 on the clock. First of the Dutch riders here. Kevin Jochum's there and uh, Lacosta. Still under view for leading from uh, Benekit Enelson and Pedder Fredrickson. But we're not even halfway through the jumping yet. A lot of uh, good horses and riders to come, 44 in all, to come forward in this world ranking competition here on the Friday night in uh, Oslo. The Telenor Arena alive and kicking for another edition of this uh, famous horse show, the 27th time that this has run. Now for another for Ireland, this is Richard Howley riding uh, an eight-year-old gelding called Zodiac Wasson Z. It's by VDL Zorocco Blue out of a Dutch capital mare. Richard, who's had a really strong run of results at some big five-star shows on his team of horses. Although this is a horse, as I said, it is only a young horse. It's really stepping up here this week. I think Richard just showing the trust, showing the confidence in this eight-year-old. It's jumping in its first five-star show here in Oslo. Consulent, of course, Richard's been picking up some big scores and big results over the recent run. He dropped well at Horse of the Year show last week. He had a good win in Dublin, second in Rome. Still clear. Nowhere near the leading time, though. This is much, much steadier. Seventy-three, eighty-two is not the slowest of the clears. That sits with Max Kuhner at seventy-four, thirty-seven, but seventy-three, eighty-two gives us clear round number five. It puts uh, Richard into the, the uh, top four currently. It now puts Ireland up there onto that leaderboard. But five clear rounds so far. From what uh, is fourteen that have come forward, and thirty still to go. Well, this is the turn of another Ferrara Italy. Francesco, Tertorniello, it's uh, made in Rustov, the 11 year old mare by Norton Drell. He rode this horse at the European Championships for Italy on home soil back in September. It's been a good horse for him. He jumped here actually in the uh, World Cup round 12 months ago. Jumped a clear here in Oslo. Ended up finishing in 11th place. He had eight faults in the jump off, but he went on to Helsinki and Verona. More recently, he finished fourth in the Longines King George V Gold Cup, the big Grand Prix at Hickstead back in July. He was well, though, falls foul of the first part of the combination. He was pushing on more than we've seen from some. Huge amount wrong, it's just that one fence. Plans to finish 66 64. He would have been within a what half a second or thereabouts of the leading time, would have been good enough for second had the fence not gone down. But it is that back rail going into the combination that catches him out. So that was the second of the riders, Ridley, Francesco, Torretelliello, and uh, made in Rushtohov. Great Britain now to the Olympic champion in the form of uh, Ben Mayer. Tonight riding here with Exit Remo. This 14-year-old gelding by San Remo out of a Ferrero mare that has certainly been getting stronger and stronger over the last few months. He rode it as part of the British team at Hickstead on that winning Nations Cup team. Great Britain winning there for the first time since 2013. Ben 
who's currently the Andre rank world number three. And this horse has actually jumped on a few teams for the British since he did in Brussels recently. Spruce he had a very good win with this horse out in Spruce Meadows. has gone well indoors. He had a top five in the World Cup qualifier in Madrid with this ride. They'd only been together a matter of weeks when that came round last November and that is good. 64-79 it is very good indeed from Ben and Exerimo. They do go well indoors because they lead the way. Ben Mayer superb. He's also got Voltic here. Of course another super ride. The wonderful little stallion that recently took him to individually fourth in the European Championships as it did in those World Championships last year. And I'm sure we'll be over the moon with the way that's just gone. So he leads, Alan Dufa second, and uh, Benegit Anderson sitting in third. It's Great Britain, Switzerland, Norway, although I'm sure we'll see faster. Will the faster be with a clear. Now Norway, Jenny uh, Grosjeta here riding Laurier. Part of uh, Team Philippines, the 12 year old stallion by VDL Zarocco Blue. I've been riding this horse since May of this year, a horse that's been used by most members of the Philippines family. Perhaps predominantly originally by Thibault and more recently by Ludo. Ludo actually finished top 10, job to clear in the World Cup qualifier in Corinna last December. Jenny jumped well with this horse, found herself in the top 10 of the four star Grand Prix at Centaur in September. She's been a very strong rider for Norway in the youth divisions part of the rider team last year but four faults here today make that eight just got tougher and tougher towards the end of the track 6891 on the clock and the total of 20 there for jenny for norway back to the replays so still Ben Mayer leads the way Anna Dufa sitting in second best of the Norwegian riders in third is uh, Benedikt Endersen another though for Norway coming our way in just a moment their most experienced perhaps in the form of Gear Gillux and Jimmy then riding the gelding by uh, Kadula Dutillard called Ambrosio Dalsi it's a new ride this one for the man that has ridden at five World Cup finals, including 2022 in Leipzig. Of course, he won the World Cup round in uh, Gothenburg as well back in 2020. Now, this is a horse, as I say, sort of new to him. But it's not necessarily completely new to the family because Johan rode it here in Oslo last year. It was originally produced by Simon Schroeder and Patrick Sander. Then went on to uh, Olivia Lemier and Pierre Schwitzer. Yeah, and so uh, then taking on the ride before, in fact, it went back to Pierce. And then this year we've seen Abdullah Al Shabatli riding it in Stockholm and Monaco. And more recently, Jordi van Massanova in September. And then Gear taking it here to the five star show for the first time. So it's got used to plenty of different jockeys. Now it's got a man with plenty of knowledge and experience in the saddle, taking nothing away from those that have ridden in the past. But I'm sure, despite that one offense, that one little mistake, that Jimmy will get a good relationship built and he'll build it quickly with this horse.
Well, there we go. 71-1-6, just outside the top 10, into 11th place for Gig Ullickson and Ambrosio Del Cibo. Reaching forward gives the horse a pat. First time together in the ring. Just going to have to work the kinks out as they go along. Well, I mentioned that prior to uh, Gig Ullickson riding that horse, the last rider to ride it was this particular rider from Belgium now. It's Jordi, Jordi van Nassenova today riding the nine-year-old gelding called Olympic van de Padenboer. Gelding by the sire, Balibet de Rue. Jordi, who jumped here in Oslo last year, in fact, he went on to Helsinki, where he jumped clear a week later. He jumped well in the likes of uh, Leipzig and Basel, where it hadn't been for a couple of time faults in the wrong place from his point of view. He'd have added to the uh, clear round list. He's got a good record, but sadly here it goes down. Still, Ben Mayer leads the way. Got it really deep. I'm trying to just sit the horse back. And he guides the horse over the final fence to keep it on the 12th. 68.39 on the clock for Jordi, Jordi van Masadov and uh, Olympic van de Padenboer. So the nine-year-old there with fences falling. Still the order remains the same. We've got three more to go before we take a short break. Because we will be uh, halfway through this Friday night class here in Oslo. It's the warm-up act in so many ways to that Longine FEI Jumping World Cup round that will take place here live on uh, Sunday, leg one of 14 in the Western European League. Now the turn of Mario Stevens. Germany's turn then with Starissa. This 10-year-old gelding by Staccato Gold has been impressive this year. He's jumped some good Strong Nations Cup rounds, including in St. Gallen. Jumped well in uh, Aachen. They had a very good win in Hamburg. More recently found their way into the top three of the Grand Prix of Munster. again so coming into the middle part of the track on the fall Done well, though. Hasn't let the round get away from them. They kept it on the four all the way to the finish and kept it under 70 seconds. So 69. 31 goes into the top 10. I'm trying to think if that was the first rider we'd seen from Belgium. I think it had to be. We've got a good, strong lineup of riders from Belgium here. They all sort of fall in the second half when you think of the likes of uh, Peter de Vos, Rick Hembrick. Vermeer and others. And there is one rider here from Spain, and here they are. This is the turn of Mariano Martinez Bastida riding Bellano van der Wiener the gelding by Berlin. Rode this horse at the European Championships in Milan. He also recently, in fact, rode in his second FEI. Jumping Nations Cup final in Barcelona with this horse few team outings, Nations Cup double clear in Deauville in the three star. He went there in August and won the Grand Prix on Bellano in the four star.
This is a good round. Suddenly, Ben Mayer's time, 64.79. Could be under threat here from the rider from Spain. Not anymore. He was twisting. His horse was really over to the right when he came round that corner. And it almost again looked like it drifts slightly, but it's like twisted as well. And we'll have a look when we get the replay. Mariano there, though, coming unstuck, as has been the case for one or two others in the final double. Coming into the final line. See right over to the right hand side. He tries to sort of get a bit, a little bit over. Well, the next to go to take us into our uh, short break. It's a combination for Denmark. The second of the Danish riders is uh, Caroline Rehoff Peresen, riding Kelvin 115. It's gelding by Kosselan. A Coleman mare, 12 years of age. A strong youth career at European level. Some five stars in the likes of Rotterdam and oh dear, just get the horse going forward again. Finished second at the Hamburg Derby on a Dean over the line. from 9 to 10. That's the score with the fence going down and another to take them on to 12. And he said, well, I wonder if he'll pick up time fault here because he's taken all the pace she has to just try and get the horse back underneath her. And the time she does indeed. 16 is the score. Jumping in time combining there. Carolina Pedersen there for Denmark. So we are halfway through this launching ranking class here on the Friday night at the Oslo Horse Show for 2023. And Ben Mayer for Great Britain leads as it stands ahead of Anna Dufer for Switzerland. Better Heat Anderson for Norway currently sits in third. Peter Fredrickson, Richard Howley, Max Kuna give you your top six, which are the clears as they stand. Here is the lineup. Ben leading there on exit Remo, 64.79. We know there are faster times. We've seen it, but the uh, riders that delivered them did so with fences down. That means Ben at the moment sitting pretty at the top. We, uh, therefore, just going to take a short break, short pause here, and then we will come back second half of this uh, great jumping class here tonight in Oslo.
Back underway with this uh, fabulous Friday. Here we are with you live in Oslo, the uh, world ranking competition that sets things up for the big one on Sunday and the opening leg of the Western European League's uh, Longin FBI Jumping World Cup season will kick off here on uh, Sunday afternoon. Looking forward to uh, a brilliant season over the next six months. At the moment, this uh, one round faults and time class is led by the Olympic champion Ben Mayer on uh, his ride, Exit Remo, out in front ahead of Ale Rufa for uh, the Sw Swiss and uh, then local rider, Norwegian rider, Benedikt Endersen sitting in third. Now to Germany, to the young talent that is Philipp Schulter Topoff riding Avantus 4, the 12-year-old uh, gelding by Aprecio. Still 22 to uh, jump in this class. Young man, of course, who won the World Cup round in 2021 in uh, Acruña. This horse stepped up to five star in Basel back at the start of this year, jumped well in Hamburg. And if he's had a really successful year, although sadly tonight already with the fence down, just trying to turn in tightly to that Longine fence at number six. And we'll just see who else really tries to attack. There's a couple of really interesting options that Ilya Travagnoletti has given them on this course. And we know how delicate they need to be when they come around this corner into this final line, this double. Shortened up to get the seven under 70 seconds, 67.55, it's uh, just top 10 for the moment. You've got those uh, six clear rounds sitting pretty at the top, some of them pretty slow. There's uh, 10 seconds, the gap between first and sixth. You've seen some fast rounds finishing with fences down when you think of Henrik and uh, Mariano and others. Belgium. Said they had some really strong riders with us, and we hadn't really seen many in the first half of the class. Rick Hemrick rides here with Morfine de Musa, the 11 year old gelding by Nabab Derev. Jump clear this year in both the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix qualifier in Falsterbo, and jump well more recently in Brussels. Rick, who rode at the World Cup final, his only World Cup final back in uh, Setogenbosch in 2012 when he finished inside the top 10 called uh, Quaco de Kerambas. A lovely turn back into the combination, got the in and gets out and is still clear and just giving himself a little bit more space than one or two have here. He wants to leave them up. Gets the clear as well and dips under the 72nd mark. It's good enough for third for uh, Rick Emmerich there. Morphine de Musa, 69.06 on the clock. Five seconds off the lead, but it doesn't matter for the moment. It goes into the top three, puts Belgium up there onto this leaderboard. The Norwegian talent of uh, Benevite. It pushes uh, them back into fourth place. Seven clear rounds. And you for sitting second, Ben Mayer still leads those 64 79. Now, though, to uh, Michael van der Vleuten. Inside the world's top 20, we go. Riding the nine year old stallion by Darko called O'Bailey van Het Bruchoff NOP. This was the ride that he used at those uh, European Championships for the Dutch team in Milan this year. His fifth European outing for a man who is uh, very well decorated at championship level, including individual bronze at the recent World Championships and Olympic Games in Tokyo. He's riding a horse. He jumped, jumped 
to win the Nations Cup team that won, didn't he, in uh, Rotterdam this year. It's, it was originally produced, actually, by uh, Eric Jr. Van der Verden. And sort of stepped up more and more over the last couple of years. They jumped, in fact, together, these two here 12 months ago. And then that journey has just continued to ever since. It'll be fascinating come Riyadh if Michael qualifies and goes because he's jumped at six World Cup finals. Sorry, five World Cup finals. His sixth place was his best ever finish. Did that twice, but I was going to say all of his finals are on birdie. The super stallion took him to so much success. It's a steady round with O'Bailey, but it's a clear round, 71-64, to uh, move in to the top five for the Dutchman. So uh, faster than Peter Fredriksen. And uh, just putting in a really nice performance. There's plenty more pace in those two. So still chasing 64-79, Ben Mayer's time. Next up, an informed partnership. Wilm Vermeer rides a joy ride S. They had a brilliant win in the Grand Prix in Warsaw last month. In fact, it was the class that Grand Prix in Warsaw. He finished second in 2022, and then he went back this year and won it. He was also there with Joyride on the Nations Cup team for Belgium, but finished second. He jumped a lovely double clear on this horse. So he was on the Nations Cup team with his uh, top ride, IQ Vanage Dean Jane, jumped double clear in the recent Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final, but not to be here in Oslo this evening. I was wondering if these two would have perhaps been a partnership that could have gone out there and challenged Ben, but more of a sort of schooling type round having had the fence down early doors To the four, but very steady 77.65 on the clock there to uh, pick up the four to the top 20 for Wim Vermeer and uh, Joyride S. We'll just go back and have a little look at some of the replays here. Although there's partnership, more to come from Belgium. Still two or three more of their riders left in the draw. Still Great Britain out in front. Young jockey. For Finland goes next, Aurora Vasama rode on the young rider team in uh, Godominore back in July. That rode this horse on that young rider team. It's ridden on a few youth teams over the years, juniors, children's. It's also ridden on a couple of Nations Cup teams with the uh, horse as well this year in Drammen. She jumped clear and four and Uglahan. She jumped for four and four for Finland. She just clipped that back rail, she has. And I'll take that back. It was the front rail she dragged with it. As the camera just moves on a little bit quick sometimes. Mm -hmm. fence at nine and sends them down on the fire strides to that big wide parallel over the water tray. Oh, just again getting caught of the last eight it is 73 39 
Yeah, looking where that next clear might come from. And, uh, Reason to be for Finland. Still Great Britain, Switzerland, Belgium, your one, two, three in terms of nations. Well, we move from Finland back to Belgium to one of their most decorated riders. Championship medals are plenty for Peter de Vos in Tokyo to team gold at the Europeans in 2019. This particular horse is the nine-year-old mare called Jarina J by Cicero Z Van Pamel. A very good win in Rotterdam, jumped very well in Brussels. It was originally produced by Caroline. Peter took the ride on in March of this year and stepped up to the five-star shows in Rome and just allowed the horse to develop and let the results come with it. Saying this is going to be the quickest round, but he's certainly letting the horse travel. It's got a lovely rhythm going here. Too soon, and down it goes, just perhaps showing a little bit of greenness in the nine year old man. Second part of the double going down, it makes it 8. 68.46 was the time. And that's a time that would get you into third with a clear round as it stands. At times, bizarrely, so spread out amongst the clears. 64.79 leading the way. You can then go back, what, just over a second to 66.03. Then you're going back nearly three seconds to 69.06 to third place to give you sort of percent and then I mean it's another second and a half back to fourth now this is a partnership that have pace a plenty it is uh, for France next up Gregory Cotard riding here with uh, Coquin Duval the 11 year old mayor by my Lord Cartago Rides without the nose band. Jumped very well in the Grand Prix at Hickstead. The uh, King George had a recent win in the Grand Prix in Ascona with this horse, but again, not to be. They've jumped well indoors in the past. They won the Grand Prix in Bordeaux back in February. Fascinating the way that double is just drawing the mistakes out of them. Gregory Cotard, Coquin de Val, 67.08. So again, a time that would bring you in the top three without fences falling, but the clear round is what we need. Enough pace. Still 15 to jump in this Friday night class here in uh, Oslo. Right, Belgium. Belgium now with uh, this partnership of uh, Ignace uh, Philippe de Voist riding Jasper. Nine year old gelding by Andy Armozed. Ignace, of course, married to Swiss international rider Jane Richard Phillips. And now he's had the second fence down to Shane. This is a horse that he's produced. It's their first five star show together. They last jumped in Chantilly in the two star back in July.
just that second fence down. Now that can be added to it. It's a total of eight. Jumps the final double without any trouble. But the last also goes down to uh, bring it to a 12 score oh. for Ines uh, Philippe's the voice there for Belgium with Jasper, but like I said a little moment ago, that was stepping up here into five-star competition for the first time. So they're still with a uh, long journey ahead of them. Saying a nine-year-old. Well, the next to go, one of two in a row that we're going to see from Norway, Balflam. Riding uh, Pletish, the 11 year old gelding by Perigo, out of a Kornerablenski mare. Oh, he jumps at the Europeans both in 2017 and 2019 on Skaderberg's Larkin. These two jumping in their first show together, in fact. It's been ridden in the last couple of years by young riders. Eldaradet, Bratton Johnson from Norway. Getting in a real pickle here as they come down quite hard on that back rail and whether they're willing to come back to a combination to start things off again or they'll retire, we will see. to say we're ready to go again. He is going to come back to the combination. Oof, big jump in. Had to shorten up a little bit in the middle, but he got out. And that was well applauded. They appreciated what he was doing there. I would expect after having had that problem with the way the horse has jumped on since he's going to maybe pick up time he is picking up time but actually he jumped really well in the second half of that round once they got going again so that was Norway Palflam riding Pletish finishing there on a total of 13 as they pick up a time penalty as well second trip down that combination. I'm going to stay with Norway though for the next to go because it's the turn of Leah Vonovec Sverzen riding Kito Esplia van de Torsho by Esplia van de Heike with Gelding. That's at the first fence down. Their day. The young lady that's ridden on two youth European teams that, with that horse that was in the top four with the under 25 Grand Prix in Stockholm this year. Also, originally had Grand Prix in Drammen. So, it is very capable. through the combination. And then that's got going again nicely. Just have to put the problems early on behind them. Time penalties as well, clocking up. <laughs> oh, 
33 it is a score. Not a day to remember, but certainly a day to learn from there with Quito. Quito Esplier, Van der Trusho, and uh, Lia Ponovic Sverdersen. Still, though, we've got three more to go for Norway within the final 12 or so that are going to jump in this class. Still got two to go for Belgium. Although the uh, next up is for Belgium. This then is uh, Peter Clemens riding Quatinka, the 12 year old mare, by FRH Quaid. It's only their third show together, admittedly, for these two. It was ridden over the last couple of years by Lars Kirsten, John Well, and the likes of Hamburg and Wellington. It's a five star winner with Kevin Yockums, but as well before that, again, maybe that an experience that time together counting against them with the second going down checked the horse wanted to find the right place for takeoff Across the middle, number seven doesn't really cause too many problems. We want that the leader, Ben Mayer, might look back on his video and realise he gave a bit of a rub too. Finishing on the eight, it is. So 74-23 on the clock, eight the score for Belgium. Peter Clemens there and the 12-year-old Kotinka. Uh, Third show together. Long winter ahead. Still another to go for Belgium. Towards the end of the class. As I say, several in there for Norway. You can add to that the, the Netherlands, Brazil, Sweden, Italy, Ireland, France. Back though with the home team in fact to the rider that's already had a win in a five-star class here in Oslo this year because this is the second of the five-star classes and Johan Sebastian Gullikson won the first of them just a few hours ago this ride tonight though Johan is using is called Harwich VDL for the VDL stud this uh, gelding by Arezzo VDL this was the ride for Johan at the European Championships in Milan this year, his second European outing. It's a former ride that plenty of people may know of uh, Marlon Zanatelli. I remember watching these two, well, Marlon finished third in the King George, the Hickston Grand Prix on this horse. Johan only started with it in June. In fact, it would perhaps make their what, fourth show together. jump still at the moment though eight clear rounds filling the top eight places and that will go down the order outside in the top 15 74 23 with the fence falling there for Johann Sebastian Gullickson well, uh, the Gullickson family here we've seen gear we've seen Johan and uh, a little bit later on we will see Vicky as well Best of the Dutch riders, Michael van der Vluten sits in fifth. We see one horse from the VDL stud. And now we see another major part of the VDL stud in the form of Leopold van Osten here with the VDL Group Iron Z. It's 10 year old gelding by Charisma Z. These two have ridden on a couple of Big Nations Cup teams this year, including the winning team in Rotterdam. They were also on the team together in Falsterbo and Dublin. It's going to be a 
Well, he's ridden at three World Cup finals in his career. Just encouraging the horse to open up a little bit coming round that turn. He got the confidence that when he gets there, this horse can jump. Still showing plenty of confidence. I'm not sure that he's as fast as... Ah, it's gone. It doesn't matter. I, was about to say, I don't think he's as fast as Ben, but... I would have said he would have made top three or four with this round. So the clock hasn't stopped, so we'll come back to that. Confirmed at 71.64, so he would have gone into uh, 50. Well, in fact, it's an identical time. Identical time. To Michael van der Vluten, but they're separated by a fence down. Michael sits fifth, and uh, Leopold goes into 17th place. That's the cost of a fence currently. Next up, Brazil, the yellow jacket, therefore, of the legendary Yuri Mansur. Ride Cheyenne. De la Viol, the 11 year old gelding by Namab Dereb for the man from Brazil that finished in fourth place in Omaha at the Longin FI Jumping World Cup final this year on Vitiki. He's ridden at Olympic and World Championships. Second fence has caught quite a few of them out. He started with this ride, would have been about a year ago now. Recently jumping out in Canada. He's jumped quite a few five stars with it over the course of this year. just to get drawn into the front part of the double. That would be the first part of the second part. It's uh, been expensive for plenty. It's eight as a score, 72-22. Yuri Mansur not in play tonight on uh, Cheyenne de Vial. Still Ben Mayer, Exerimo leading the way. Alan Dufer sitting in second. Ulrich Hendrik is currently third. It is Great Britain, Switzerland, Belgium. The one, two, three at the moment because we are, what, eight or nine still to jump here in this uh, Friday night class, this one round of jumping, faults in time, world ranking competition. Next to go, one or two left in the draw for uh, Norway. Perez, uh, Silo Henriksen riding Santos Z. performance this year in Ulgahan where they also finished second in the Grand Prix, top six in the Grand Prix in Drammen well on home soil really deep, just never had the right, like, never were going to be in the right place once she got around the corner which is a shame she just had nowhere to go the eight penalties as they come round to the 
final line, this double down to the last. Which they jump really well, actually. And the last. 76, 77 on the clock, but it's uh, full song beside it. And nothing changing at the top of the order. Eight combinations of John Discourse clear. Ben Mayer is the fastest. Matt's Kuna sitting in eighth place. Ten seconds between the top eight. Now, Sweden. Three Swedish riders in play tonight. And now it's the turn of the third of them. This, another who played a key role in that team gold medal winning performance at the European Championships this year in Milan. It is Jens Fredriksson for Sweden tonight, riding the Arados Rose Elif. Was the championship ride from that gold medal winning performance as well at the World Championships last year it was uh, Markan Cosmopolit. He finished third on in the World Cup final as well in 2022 in Leipzig. He rode this horse here in Oslo last year, finished in the top six in one of the classes, and he's just having to pick out his strides a little here. He's put in some good results. He was third in Arken, third in Falstavo in the Grand Prix qualifier. Ah, oh, just flattened off. He's just struggling a little bit to keep the horse underneath him. It's just running on him. Certainly doesn't look the easiest of rides for Jens, but it's quick. 63.87, it's faster than Ben. Well, the only rider that's gone round the course faster than that is another Swede, Henrik von Eckermann. Both Henrik and Jens, frustrated as they'll be, are sat there on four faults apiece in ninth and tenth place. Peter Fredriksson, considerably slower than both of them, sat up in sixth because he jumped it clear. And that's the story. At the moment, though, the round from Ben Mayer leads still Great Britain out in front here, the Olympic champion. Leads on exit Remo here on this Friday night. Now we have an, a uh, partnership for Italy. One of two Italians left in the draw. This is going to be the turn of Guido Grimaldi riding Messi seven. This, that was a horse that was originally produced by Manuele Guadiano, another Italian star. Ten year old gelding by Messenger out of a uh, Chaco Blue Mare. Recently jumped in Prague alongside that Olympic qualifier, that event has uh, been jumping as well in Italy. stories of woe in this class in terms of those that have just had one fence down and just, just backed off a little bit coming around the corner. You've got the in gate there and that won't have helped. But there's plenty that have just had the wrong fences down. From their perspective, Guido Grimaldi there on a total of 12. 69.75 is the uh, final time. to go. Norway, Ireland, France, Belgium, Italy left in the draw. And the last out for uh, Norway. The lady that starred here 
last year with this ride. This is uh, Victoria Gillickson, Vicky Gillickson riding Equine America, Papa Roach. Her championship ride that finished second here in Oslo in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup round 12 months ago. Great run of results. Saw her go to her first World Cup final in uh, Omaha. It was a World Championship ride last year and also been a European Championship ride both in Risenbeck where she finished individually inside the top 10 and more recently in Milan. tap coming out of the combination. Papa Roach is having a little play with his head. And jumping rather nicely. 14 years of age now, this gelding by Pettigrew. Best of the Norwegian riders at the moment, sitting in fourth. That was uh, Benegit Enderson. Not as fast as Ben. Which is going to be. Oh, it's a lovely round. It's a clear round from Vicky Gullickson. Into the top 10 goes seven for that. Looking at rounds to give you confidence and get yourselves ready for the big one on Sunday. I would expect that's exactly what she needed. So a uh, super start to the campa campaign here over these few days on home soil. Now the turn of Ireland. Mark McCauley. He's here with the ten-year-old mare, Esmeralda Dohis Z. A lot of three-star shows with this horse. He's jumping the five-star, I think, in Brussels last year, but mainly been in France and Italy with this ride and picking up some good results. Of course, he recently had a very good Grand Prix win on uh, GRS Lady Amaro in Saint-Tropez. Challengers just keep fading. Ben Mayer at the moment will be watching on. I'm not sure he think. Oh, well, I'm not sure he would have thought at the time that he'd done enough. We've seen, as I said, plenty of times now quicker. Which is they've all had fences down. Four it is. For the Friday night round from Mark McCauley with Esmeralda Dohis Z. Still Ben leading Great Britain, Switzerland, Belgium, the 1 2 3 here in Norway. Live with you in Oslo for this Friday night class world ranking competition. The season getting started for the Western European League with the big World Cup round here on Sunday afternoon. Kevin Stout goes next. Chance for France in these final three. Rides uh, Bode Lobry Z, this uh, ten-year-old gelding. Took this in a few Grand Prix this year, more recently in Rome. Started with the uh, horse at the end of last year. Kevin will be looking to try and qualify this year or this season for his 12th Longin FDI Jumping World Cup final. Having jumped in Omaha this year, it's a side he's never actually won as best as his placings. He was third in 2013 in Lyon on uh, Silvana. 
A man that's won a European title and Olympic gold. Plenty of other medals aside. Tonight, I tell you what, he's not that far off. 64.79 as a leading time. Ben Mayer may have led this class for an awfully long time, but I get the feeling it could, oh no, it's gone coming out of the double. The tyre won the last as well, 64-1-3. The time was there to be beaten and beat the time he did. But was that rush towards the end? Just a little bit too much to ask. And sadly for Kevin Stout, it is not to be. As he has the last two fences down, Ben Mayer can breathe again. We are now down to the final two combinations to go. Bet against anyone in this class at this point, though. We will see, although this partnership are jumping in their first five-star show together. It's Anthony Wellens for Belgium. Domand Gio. It's a stallion by Cornet Stern. It's 13 years of age. Jumped on the Nations Cup team for Belgium in Lugahan. Right, that he's produced. Oh my golly gosh, how did he get over the first? Because that was every which way but forward at one point. They were going sideways, sideways, one way, sideways, sideways, back and jumped it. round of jumping once he got over the first until he got to uh, fence 10 and just getting caught out at the end of the final strides now coming into the final line clock ticking on on that score of four 68 96 no difference again he goes down to 16th place at the time on a clear that would have seen him in third Shows you the pain of having a feather. You go one way and then it looked like it was going to really twisted all the way through. It was kind of been very comfortable. But it means we're down to one more to go here on the Friday night in Oslo. And ben Mayer leading on exit Remo as the next and last to go is another Italian in the uniform of the Italian Air Force. It is a Lorenzo de Luca. Rides at Denver to Talma. The gelding, 10-year-old by uh, Viga de Cis, Lorenzo. Riding a uh, former ride, this in fact, of uh, Penelope Leprevance, the French team gold medalist from Rio. It's only their third show together. They jumped well in Barcelona to find their way into the top 10. Lorenzo has ridden on several championship teams for Italy, including the world's. He jumped very well last year in Herning. He's been to two World Cup finals as well in 2019 and 2017. That wonderful ride, Enzo de la Tronche. And uh, Lorenzo is not going to make this easy for Ben. Might well only be their third show, but you can already see he's really working at this round. Oh, hung in the air a little bit there. if he's quicker at the moment but I'd certainly say he's not far away he's got 10 seconds to get down this final line could it be last to go where is Lorenzo De Luca going to find his way with this uh, new ride Denver De Talma he jumped the last is he quick enough not quite 67-08 but he has got into third as the last to go the Italian star has put in a really strong round to finish that is a pat well deserved brilliant performance from uh, Lorenzo but what a start to the trip to Oslo on the opening night of the five-star classes. It goes to the Olympic champion, Ben Mayer. Tonight, though, riding Exit Remo, this uh, horse that continues to get stronger and stronger. Full results for you. You see the British uh, star and the uh, world number three 
coming out as number one tonight. Alan, you've uh, great start on the uh, wonderful Dante MM to finish in second. Lorenzo De Luca, we just saw there, to take third ahead of Rick Hemrick and the best of the Norwegian riders, uh, Benedict Sedelard, Edvardsson, and then uh, Michael van der Verten there, the uh, Dutch superstar, finishing with O'Bailey in sixth. Peter Fredriksen, Vicky Gullickson, Richard Howley, Max Kuna giving us uh, the top ten all clear tonight. The super quick rounds from the uh, Swedish stars of Henrik von Eckermann, the world champion, world number one, World Cup holder. All the titles are his at the moment. But um, tonight wasn't his night, nor for Jens Fredriksson. And there were others there, as you've seen, that were faster than our uh, eventual winning time. But once the fences fall, it all changes. Ben Mayer has jumped it clear and he's jumped it quick. And that is a uh, tremendous result for him this evening on uh, exit Remo. I'm sure he'll be over the moon, as will his owners, uh, Charlotte Rossiter and Pamela Wright, who uh, have been owners of Ben's that uh, support him and the sport in such uh, amazing ways. Well, what a uh, great start. What an amazing start here in Oslo. And of course, it all now is uh, the focus towards Sunday. It's the first of the 14 legs that will uh, take the Western European League all the way through to Riyadh next year. The first of 11 different countries that we're going to visit on this tour. It's the 40th season of the uh, Longin FEI Jumping World Cup. And uh, very, very excited to see who's going to come out on top in that World Cup round here this weekend and then we continue at pace with uh, the likes of Helsinki coming up next week where uh, we have the second leg once it starts the ball keeps rolling and it rolls all the way through to Riyadh next year who will qualify we will see when we come back and join you live here on FEI TV wherever you're enjoying the sport from around the world I hope you've enjoyed it uh, with us here on this uh, wonderful Friday night here in Oslo certainly a tremendous way brilliant way to start the uh, big indoor season of shows and there is so much coming it is uh, mouth-watering to uh, watch the battles that will commence as we uh, go week in week out with uh, the 2023 and 2024 FEI jumping world cup season but uh, thank you for being with us live tonight wherever you've been thank you we've enjoyed it we'll catch up soon live here on FEI TV